What's good, YouTube? It's your boy TSO Sage, and I'm back with another video. Now, even though it doesn't feel like it at all, it is the holiday season. So, even though you guys didn't hit the like goal on the last video, I knew 3.5 was Mickey Mouse. For the holidays, my gift to you is uploading every day for the rest of this month, starting as of this video. And I might even stream one here soon, so if you're not subbed to the channel, definitely do that. And hopefully, you guys give me the gift of 50K. If you don't give me the gift of 50K, that's perfectly fine because I'm gonna give a gift to myself. But I'm gonna announce that at the end of this video for now. It's fucking hot takes, bro. I don't need to explain it. All right, so the most popular hot take that I got on Twitter and on Twitch, to be honest, was essentially the Warriors this year are the 73 and 9 Warriors part two. And by that, I mean, very literally, a lot of people believe they were going to win 73 games, if not more than 73 games this season. I said this last week on Twitch and I'll say it again right now. I strongly disagree with that take. Even though I would say the 2016 team is better, me simply saying the roster isn't as good as 2016 or I don't think the roster can win 73 games is far from the main reasons why I don't think it will happen. One, the Warriors aren't healthy and while you could easily argue that that's a good thing considering how they're performing hell depending on the subject i often do myself but in this conversation is somewhat of a double-edged sword because it's already a hot enough take to imply that clay thompson will come back 100 percent same thing with james wiseman mind you i'm a believer that clay is going to come back 100 percent that's my personal hot take and obviously they're going to get better for it but when we're talking about record-breaking success y'all can't admit y'all reaching a little bit essentially you're saying that clay thompson and wiseman come back there's going to be no rust nor just period while also ignoring the fact that let's be honest here their schedule has definitely not been as challenging as it will be later in the season so again essentially you're expecting clay thompson and wiseman to come back be healthy from the jump fit in from the jump and while the warriors are going to go against harder competition you still have them at bare minimum continuing the production they've already shown that's kind of crazy of a take but i get it it's a hot one even then though that's only my second biggest reason as to why i don't think the warriors are doing that personally the main reason the golden state warriors won't win 74 or 73 games is because i I believe there's no way they even want to do that for my crayon eaters out there obviously every team would love to go 82 and no and not lose a single game of basketball ever but let's use a bit of common sense as we all know that's not what i'm referring to the effort the golden state warriors did to acquire that 73 and 9 record was insane and a lot of people don't talk about it and while we 100 percent appreciate the warriors for that effort and for achieving such a record what people talk about even less is the amount of injuries the warriors had on the path to the championship and even during that final series whether it was a guy like andrew bogut stephen curry himself or even the their former finals MVP and Andre Iguodala. I'm not crediting all those injuries to the 73 and 9 effort, but it would be nothing but ignorant to ignore the possible effects of putting in said effort, having your team being fatigued in the playoffs, and obviously the worst case scenario is risk injury again. Truthfully, it's nice the conversation exists, but I think Golden State knows it's in their best interest not to blindly chase that. Carl Anthony Towns is a dark horse for MVP. I definitely disagree with this, but I think it's because I have a stricter definition on what a dark horse is. A dark horse, in my opinion, is someone that can feasibly win the award despite not being a heavy favorite but they do have to at least have one talking point or one advantage over the favorites and there's no logical way as to why a carl anthony towns star player on the ninth seeded timberwolves at 11 and 11 would somehow surpass the guys like stephen curry kevin durant or Giannis for mvp if you guys have a solid argument for cat winning mvp below definitely comment it but there's nothing coming to my mind for that i just think he's completely outclassed rather than a dark horse but even if you don't like my definition of the term and it's basically you saying cat is an honorable mention for mvp I don't think it's that honorable. You could argue Ja Morant, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Paul George, Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, and Trey Young are all just straight up better candidates for the award right now. Now, do I think Cat loses all the debates between the names I just said? No. But given those nine names plus the three names I said earlier, you could legit argue Cat isn't even a top 10 candidate. I'm not slandering Cat in any way, shape, or form. Look at what the fuck he's doing. But I think calling him a dark horse or an honorable mention is just Cat. But he is having a great season season so i'm glad you brought him up he does need to be talked about a bit more just not in mvp talks anthony davis is extremely underrated and the only criticism that people can come up with is that he's soft or injury prone i agree look i'll premise this again with the lakers suck just so you guys aren't thinking oh my god happy lakers fan even though we're hurt and we're actually playing better we're still not as good as we should be again the lakers are some shit said it twice now but the takes around anthony davis nowadays are so cringe and stupid but if anything hypocritical because as bro said all you guys are doing are calling him soft and injury prone He's having one of his better seasons inside, attempting most of his shots inside, and literally has missed a game. And yes, soft and injury prone is all you see about Anthony Davis. I'm not even about to drag it for real because if he was shooting well from three, it wouldn't be a conversation. And since he's been playing the five, yet another thing you bitched about, his mid-range to me at least has definitely looked better. And if you're asking me, even the defense takes I don't like that much because he's the only competent defender we have right now. I don't view Kent Bazemore nor Avery Bradley in 2021 as lockdown defenders. I just don't. As of right now, 80 is our only good defender, let alone 
one is he a great one he literally has all the responsibility right now i don't really get how people are viewing his defense as bad right now but hey it is what it is laker pack still in the air right now so people are just smoking that shit and getting high off it they're gonna say some dumb shit let it rock lonzo ball is better than Lamelo ball okay so very briefly i do disagree with the tape because despite lonzo being a better three-point shooter despite lonzo being a better defender all jump shots are not created equal Lamelo ball is significantly a better shot creator and not as significant but it's definitely noticeable he is a better playmaker as well one of my main issues with lonzo right now is the fact that nobody's scared of him driving to the basket because he doesn't do it nearly as often as he should which gets rid of a lot of playmaking opportunities and then obviously the opposing defense is paying more attention to Lamelo ball than they are to lonzo ball so for Lamelo ball to essentially be able to do what he does despite that not gonna lie in terms of just creating opportunities whether it's scoring or passing Lamelo ball just outclasses though and even though lonzo is a better defender and lonzo does have a higher three-point percentage Lamelo's far from a bad shooter and not all three-point shots are created equal maybe it's a hot take for me saying that's not an awful take but nah i'm taking Melo. dejounte murray is an all-star or at least on that level not to be repetitive but it's kind of like the carl anthony towns thing from earlier he's made a massive leap as a playmaker it's actually kind of insane and he's definitely just a better player in general but the fact that you can look at the top six seeds in the west and look at seven better all-star candidates is crazy and i don't even need to name other lower seeded players because if the bar for an all-star is this low jordan Poole and andrew wiggins got a shot then like bro what are we doing a lot of you guys make it seem like i slander your favorite player all the time and get mad at me on takes about your favorite player even though trust and believe i don't give a shit about slandering your favorite player but either you guys are just really loose with terms like superstar super team all-star or you just have really low expectations because my god that is not all-star level in 2021 he's definitely made the improvements and is having a good season but come on now bro i believe Giannis will win another championship but i don't think it will ever be in milwaukee why do you think that i'm being so serious i've done a lot of brag rapping for the amount of predictions i've been on timing with this season which by the way i said the suns were contenders in chat and the comment section gave me a lot of shit for that and now who dick you riding that's crazy but if there was one thing i would think about taking back it would be me barring the nets make the finals because right now it looks like i'm gonna take milwaukee i did this bit with the suns but y'all recognize them now so let me start doing it with the bucks the bucks have won eight straight games and nobody's talking about it have drew middleton and Giannis even lost yet yeah i'm not gonna lie bro i don't know why you think that the east still has nobody to stop Giannis for real joel and b being the only threat but one he has to be there and two if the sixers and bucks had a series bro i swear to god any of you taking philly the troll would be too obvious i would just ignore it the only other competent in hell honestly arguably a better threat than joel and b would be bam out of bio and he just got hurt i know he's coming back soon but i'm gonna still take the bucks in that series so even though if you want to be like nah sage miami's gonna beat the bucks i guess that's respectable okay but when you factor realistically nobody's gonna just shut down Giannis in the east and then in terms of a team just outgunning the bucks i mean we all think of brooklyn but kyrie irving might not even be there and while i believe in chicago more than most i don't think they beating the bucks i'd argue the bucks are the favorite right now if anything if i'm being honest so when you factor all of these things unless you're saying that the west just no diffs whoever comes out the east which would just be hilariously untrue it comes off as a team or two in the eastern conference are such an obstacle that Giannis just has no shot of making the finals therefore Giannis has no shot of winning the finals and he would need to get out of milwaukee to do so even if we could somehow sim to the end of Giannis's career and see if he ever did win again in milwaukee it's still like why do you think that right now like what premise do you have what foundation do you have for this date and where the hell does he have to go like what level of team does Giannis need around him to win a championship if this isn't enough they won last year man i'm gonna just tell you like this wherever Giannis goes he's gonna be a threat no matter what and right now he's in milwaukee so guess who's a threat to win a championship and while i'm still trying to figure out why you said this i'm praying to god it isn't some way to downplay Giannis or the roster around him because again they just won a championship and i know i ain't said this about Giannis in a while but it's him let's not play with bro well that's gonna do it for today's video it's me boy tso sage now before you guys dip out i do have another announcement for the channel because even though this season's games are exciting for right now at least we're at that point in time where there's not that much to say in regards to basketball it's too early for anything to have happened but it's too late to really be predicting anything new and even though me personally i do think i'm a creative dude i definitely got some series coming back for this month and some new ideas for it basketball content wise it's still kind of dragging it a bit in my opinion but there was a point in time where this channel was beyond just basketball it was damn near 50 50 with music a little splash of anime every now and then and hell we even played 2k so for my eat sleep and drink basketball people don't worry when i said earlier i'm uploading for the rest of this month but hopefully every sunday if not every other sunday it's gonna be a double upload because long term bro no cap i'm not trying to just be a basketball dude that's just a lot of wasted potential for myself content and honestly even for you guys so look i'm not trying to drag it out i know some of y'all probably already clicked off because you don't care about me outside of basketball take care and stay blessed to you guys but all i'm gonna say is on sundays we're gonna be on a different type of timing